Yeah, I've told you before about Claude and his sword and also of Frank and his tank. Well, I'll tell you tonight about my cousin Elf, who was rather a bit of a swank. Now, you've all seen the regiment out on the march when they're swinging along smart and slick. You may also have noticed in front of the band a bloke doing tricks with a stick. It's an art in walking stick painted all gold and he has it for leading the band, then all of a sudden he'll throw it up by and then catch it, with luck, in his hand. Well, my cousin Elf was one of those blokes, and the smartest that ever you'd seen. <laughs> he practised at first with a pail on his head, because he might miss it. See what I mean? Well, the first time he went for a walk with the band, the colonel kicked up such a fuss, because Elf threw his stick up a wee bit too hard and it landed on top of a bus. The conductor was taking the fares at the time and said, blimey, it's drafty up here. But it was only the breeze caused by Alfred's gold stick <laughs> as he caught him one right on the ear. Well, Alf got his stick back and they walked off again. They were going for quite a long march and Alf threw his stick a bit higher this time and it landed on top of a arch. Then the colonel said, listen, how many more times will that thing stop up in the air? Don't throw it so high, but if you feel you must, chuck it up when there's nothing up there. Then Al said, I'm sorry, sir, just one more chance. As the general returned his gold staff, said the colonel, OK, but be careful, mind you, your band is all starting to laugh. Well, they started once more and they got to the park, and Alf give his gold stick a twiddle, <laughs> but it slipped once again and flew out of his hand and hit the colonel right smack in the middle. Now the colonel had had some boar rabbit for lunch with a nice little bit of boar pork, but when a heavy gold stick starts to butt in as well, <laughs> it's enough to make anyone talk. So the colonel, he had to go over on a stretcher and he said to Alf, follow me back. And for goodness sake, don't throw that stick up again. You'll fetch someone a real nasty crack. But Al thought, I must try it just once again. I'll get it right now without doubt. He only flung it two yards, but he missed it once more. And it come down and knocked him right out. So if ever you see a drum major with band, think of Alfred and give a slight bow. Because he don't twiddle any gold sticks anymore, no. He just plays the triangle. And now... Huh? I must tell you of Alec, my fishmonger friend, how he come to drain sea lives of seals, because he first started life in a very small way, selling addicts and kibbers and eels. He sells skate and place and codlings and all, a variety of fishes he sells. And as there was plenty of all kinds of fishes, there was plenty of <laughs> all kinds of smells. And so it fell out, I mean it happened one day, he got tired, you know how one feels. And he shut up his shop and he went to a circus, where one act was sea lions and seals. I must say at this point he'd be given the sea, because someone had complied with his wishes and he sat by the ring in the very same suit in the which he'd been selling his fishing. When a nice girl sees programs, he says, not for me. I've seen all the acts on the bills. And he sat through the show munching apples and sweets <laughs> when in comes the sailors and sills. At the start, they was doing their stuff as they should and the audience whistles and shouts, while one played the cornet, two stood side by side, and was balancing balls on their snouts. Then all of a sudden, the trainer realised they'd not got their minds on their act, and he saw in a trice that to finish the show, he'd have to use plenty of tact. But the scent of the suit of my fishmonger friend was too much for the sea lions and seals. And as they had not had no food for some hours, you can tell how the hungry still fills. Then the sea lions and seals started making for Alec, 
a flapping of fins with large squirrels, and before he had time to get off his seat, he was smothered with sea lions and seals. But he made his escape and he ran for his life with the sea lions and seals at his heels. He got over in the dark, his wife said, who's your friends? She said, they're not friends, they're sea lions and seals. And Alec felt sorry, so he opened his shop to get food for the sea lions and seals. And they liked him so much that he taught them new tricks while they ate up his fishes and eels. So that is the tale of my story of Alec, the one vital point it reveals, and that is you can't keep a fish shop as well <laughs> if you want to keep sea lions and seals.